Hi guys, in this video I want to share my experience about simulating a coupling between ANSYS Maxwell and Simplerer. In Simplerer I want to simulate a PWM excitation for an induction motor. If you think these videos are useful for you, please hit the subscribe button and like the video. Thank you. First, as you can see, I modeled an induction motor that its excitation is external. The winding has four poles and the model is imported in Simpler. The ANSYS Maxwell model has six pins for three-phase excitation and two pins for motion setup. We know that the excitation is Y connected three phase. So I connected the output pins together to make a Y connection and the other pins are connected to an inverter that generates the PWM waveform voltage. Now let's see a closer look to the excitation. We have the ampermeter to measure the current, the resistance of the winding, and inductor for leakage induction of the winding. I used a two-level three-phase GTO that is connected to a DC link with 4000 voltage amplitude. This is a DC voltage source. Now, to generate the PWM waveform, we need to switch the transistors in a way that the PWM waveform is generated. So, if you double click on the inverter, you can see the control signals for upper and lower for each phase. Control signal, upper transistor phase R, control signal, lower transistor phase R, and you can see the same for phase S and phase T. The upper leg will be controlled by A1 well, A2 well will control the lower transistor. The other parameters are defining the diode and the transistor characteristics. Now let's have a look on what is the A1 value, the parameter that will make the transistor on and off. As we know, we have to compare a sawtooth waveform to a sinusoidal waveform to make the switching signals for the transistors. In the project, we have two variables, one for switching frequency and one for hysteresis value. There is a sawtooth waveform generator with the amplitude of 1 volts and frequency of the switching frequency which is defined 1 kilohertz here. And another sinusoidal waveform that has 50 hertz frequency and amplitude of 1 volts. To make a three-phase switching signals, the first waveform generator has the zero phase angle and the other two have minus 120 degrees and 120 degrees as the phase of the sinusoidal waveform. So we can compare these two waveforms to get a switching signals. In this comparator, you can see we have two input signals, one from the sinusoidal waveform with a plus sign and one from the sawtooth waveform with minus sign. So we can compare these two signals and if the remaining values are higher than hysteresis band, the switch will be on. Let's see what is the difference between the signal generated for upper transistor and lower transistor. Here is the signal that is used to switch the upper transistor. You can see if the remaining part of the comparator be upper and lower than the hysteresis band, 
the value of the signal will be 0 and 1 for upper transistor. For lower transistor, the sign will be opposite. For value 1, we can see it's 1 and for the other value, it is 0. Here in the upper leg, we can see it's the opposite. First value is 0 and second value is 1. So, if we compare these two waveforms, the remaining part exceed the hysteresis band, the switches will be on and off. The other two phase are have the same comparison values. So now we generated the signals for the inverter and the inverter will switch this DC links to the phases with the PWM waveform. In the other part, when we want to control the mechanical characteristics, we connected the motion setup pin in to zero and the other pin to a rotational values that the load and the mass of rotation will be available here. Here you can see I use a mass rotation for a moment of inertia with the value of J0.05 and for load we need to make a step load for this induction motor so the value of the load torque will be get from this step source so let's see the step generator the step time will be 0 0.4 seconds so after 400 milliseconds the value of the load torque will be minus 49 newton meters. Before this time, before the 400 milliseconds, the value of the load torque will be equal to zero, its initial value of this step. So you can see we connected the excitation to an inverter that will generate the PWM and the mechanical part to a mass density to the moment of inertia and a step value of load torque. If you had any questions or any help is needed, I will be glad to contact me via this email and WhatsApp number. Thank you for watching this video.